Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we've got a very exciting video because we're going to be starting a brand new series here on the channel. We're going to be looking at how you can become a Microsoft certified fabric analytics engineer. Bit of a mouthful, you might know it better as the DP600 exam that you need to pass if you want to get this certification. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about DP600. How do I get certified? What do I need to learn? And so in this course, what I'm going to be doing is bringing together everything that you need to know for this certification so that you can hopefully pass first time. So what are we going to be doing in this video? Well, this is a bit of an introduction. OK, so we're going to be looking at what's in the exam. What are some of the details of the exam? So how long is it? How how can you pass? Do you do it online or in person? That kind of thing. We're going to look at an overview of this course. So specifically, what are we going to learn in this course in YouTube and how are you going to learn as well? Then we're going to finish by looking at why you might want to take this course and why you might want to get fabric analytics engineering certification in general. So what's in the exam? So the first section is around planning, implementing and managing solutions for data analytics. Now within that, we've got various kind of sub modules. OK, so you need to understand the requirements. How do we identify requirements for solutions? How do we do things like security? How do you know the difference between different data gateways? How do you set up access control and workspaces and capacities? And how do you modify the settings of all these things as well? Another important section of the exam and being an analytics engineer in general is version control. You'll need to understand how to set up version control for Azure DevOps, understand some of the settings and the configuration options that that entails, as well as some of the deployment pipeline functionality as well. Now, this is not a completely exhaustive list of what's in that section of the exam. We'll go through each of those in a bit more detail. It's just the high level kind of areas that are covered in that section. And this section is worth 10 to 15% of the exam. So it's a small section, but it's a very important section, I think, anyway, in terms of becoming an analytics engineer. These are really important topics that you need to understand. So up next, we've got 40 to 45 percent of the exam. So this is really the core of the exam that you need to should probably spend most of your time studying. OK, and it's around preparation and serving of data. So this is one of the core tasks that you'll be asked to carry out as an analytics engineer. And within that, we've got quite a lot of really important topics, okay? So you've got understanding the lake house. How do we set one up? How do we create tables? Difference between tables and files. The warehouse, so the T-SQL experience. Creating shortcuts, ingesting data from external locations into our warehouse or our lake house. What are the different methods that we can choose here? And when do we choose specific ones? OK, then we've got data transformation. So once we've got our data within Fabric, we might want to do some transformations on it. Now, you can do that with T-SQL, Spark, and you will need to know at least the basics of T-SQL and Spark and also DAX in the next section as well. So there's quite a lot of languages that you need to know to kind of an intermediate level, I would say, for this exam. Next, we've got performance. So how do we optimize performance, both in terms of the getting data into Fabric, but also in terms of the transformation piece? So if you've got Spark jobs that are running really long, or you've got some T-SQL scripts that are really not very performing very well, they're taking a long time to kind of return your data, what can you do to monitor performance and then optimize it? And as I mentioned, you will need to know PySpark and T-SQL to a kind of intermediate level there. So that's something to bear in mind for this exam. So the next section of the exam is around implementing and managing semantic models. And this is worth 20 to 25% of the exam. And within this category, you've got the different storage modes. So direct query, import mode and direct late mode and kind of understanding how these things work, how to set up direct late mode, when to use it, maybe when not to use it. You're going to need to have a good understanding of DAX here. There's quite a few questions around DAX and DAX Studio and Tabular Editor 2 as well. So these are kind of things that you need to be, be aware of because you'll probably get some questions around that as well. Also within this section, you've got data modeling. So things like star schemas, bridge tables, 
how do we deal with many to many relationships? And also we've got things around security. How do we set up row level security within your semantic model, object level security, and how do we validate that that's actually working correctly? So in the final section of the exam, which is worth around 20 to 25% again, is explore and analyze data. So here we're really looking at the analysis part of being an analytics engineer, because most of your role might be in around the engineering piece, but really you need to know the analytics side of thing as well, because that's gonna make you a much better analytics engineer. So in this section, you're gonna be asked questions about data analysis, specifically using T-SQL, okay? So analyzing your lake house SQL endpoint, analyzing your data warehouse, coming up with insights from data using T-SQL. You'll also be asked about data profiling, so understanding the profile of different tables based on some of the profiling metrics that you get, and also analyzing data via the XMLA endpoint. So that's another part of this section of the exam. So these are the four sections. There's quite a lot to go through, and it covers quite a broad range of skills that you need to know, from PySpark, T-SQL, DAX, data modeling, getting data in, data modeling, serving data in semantic models as well. So quite a broad range end-to-end -end exam. So in the exam, there is between 40 and 60 questions and the results are scaled and you get given a result between zero and 1,000. So the pass mark here is 700 out of 1,000 and that's the scaled score. So that's something to bear in mind. And the questions can be of different types. Okay, so some of them are multiple choice, some of them might be a case study, and the case studies normally take two, three, four questions. So you really need to understand what's going on and you get multiple questions about the same case study. You also have things like drag and drop and ordering lists. And for a full list of the question types, I recommend you go to this resource here. It's on the Microsoft Learn, the exam question section of Microsoft Learn. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And you can also use the exam sandbox that provides you with a sandbox experience of the exact question types that you can expect in the exam. You'll get given 100 minutes to actually carry out the exam. You should set aside at least two hours though, so 120 minutes for the exam, just so that you can kind of get in, get settled. As I mentioned, it's 700 out of 1000 to pass this exam, so 70%. You can take the exam either in person in Pearson View centers, or you can do it online. So my personal recommendation would be to take the exam in person if you can. Um, it kind of eliminates a lot of the doubts and the problems around like Wi-Fi and worrying about your desk setup and your room has to be a very specific layout. And so if you can visit a center in person, I think it's a lot better because you can just walk in, take the exam and walk out. Whereas online, you have to think about lots of different things. For me, it's less stressful to do it in person if you can. So there is an exam fee, which is $165 for people in the USA. It varies for different countries, but if you look on the right hand side, we've got a free exam. So if you're very quick and you go to the link in the description and you complete the Fabric AI Skills Challenge training course before the 19th of April, so you've only got a few days, you can get a voucher to take the DP600 exam for free. So you can do that skills challenge training very quickly, get your free voucher, and then watch all of this series on YouTube. And as long as you take that exam, I think it's before June the 22nd or something. So you've got two or three months to kind of go through the material at your own pace. And then you get to save yourself $165 or the equivalent in your currency in your country. So this is what this series is gonna look like here on YouTube. We've got the first video, which is an introduction to the course. Then we're gonna be covering all 11 chapters of the exam. And the content's gonna be delivered through various real world scenarios. Cause I wanna make this content interesting for you and also make it relevant for you if you could wanna be uh, an analytics engineer or if you are an analytics engineer currently in your career. And to do this, I'm gonna be combining theory. So I think there is some theory in some of these modules. You do have to understand how things work, but then practice as well, how to actually implement this stuff in Fabric at the same time. Throughout the course, I'm going to be reinforcing that knowledge as we go through and ask, asking rhetorical questions as well as sample questions. And at the end, I do plan to go through a full video, kind of like a practice paper, let's say, designing lots of questions that you can expect within the exam. As with all of my courses, all of the resources and module notes and scripts and notebooks and all this kind of thing, I'll be posting that in the school community. So if you're not already a member there, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's completely for free, so make sure you sign up and 
yeah, you'll get access to all of that. So there's a few reasons that I just want to cover quickly here around why you might want to take this course and then go on to become a certified analytics engineer. Well, the course gives structure to your learning. Microsoft have given us a study guide and they've said these are what we think is important to learn for an analytics engineer. So it gives you a really good pathway to follow. It might also help you get a new job. Having that certification on your CV is definitely not going to hinder your chances. It would also be good to go into kind of promotion talks or pay rise talks with your boss and say, yeah, well, last year I did the certification. And this is especially true if you work in a consultancy, right? Because consultancy, they're kind of selling your skills and your experience. So if you have certification, then that can help them win work in the future. So in this lesson, we've looked at what's in the exam. We've looked at some of the exam details. We've also looked at the overview of this course. So what are the different chapters that we're going to be looking through and why I think you should take this course. Join us in the next lesson where we'll be starting the course properly and we'll be looking at how to plan and implement a data analytics solution.